So we've got our loop ready, we've done our base nicely hand stitched around and now we're going to have a go at the handle. Now the handle is quite long, or the strap, um, and mostly it's all one width, but to give it a nice uh, finish and a bit of extra strength at the bag end, it's gone quite a bit wider here, so you can see that that comes out wider there. So in the pattern, you'll find that you've got to cut out some strips, some six and a half inch wide strips by the full width of the fabric, I've said 42 inches, um, so it's either that or the width of the fabric. Um, uh, two of your main colour, or sorry, of your fabric, of the colour, like in my case the black, and one of your batting. So that should be six and a half inches wide by 42 inches long. And then we need to have the pattern shape. Now in the, in the pattern there will be a shape something like this for you to use. Um, and I've already cut mine out. So what I've done here is I've laid my batting and my two pieces of fabric right sides together so we can cut it all in one go. And I'm going to lay this and I've trimmed my selvages off the end of my piece of fabric. So I'm going to lay this on top there. Make sure that it's um, sitting nice and centrally here. You don't want to sort of it going off at an angle because this is going to be the length of the strap coming all the way along here. So by laying this on here, I'm actually going to use my rotary cutter to do this. You could mark it and cut it um, with scissors or some other method if you like. But I find that using the rotary cutter works quite well for me. Um, so I'm just going to cut the pattern shape. So cutting on the fabric next to the pattern shape, just holding this one in position, making sure it's sitting nice and central um, up at that end, because that's going to give us the long length. But this gives us that nice bit of width that we're looking for at the bag end, which just makes it a little bit stronger. And there's also, I guess, a little bit of a, a physical appeal about it. Now just be careful if you're doing this sort of cutting that you don't slip with your rotary cutter. Slightly more risky than with a ruler, but generally I find it works quite well. So I've cut both those curves now. And now, before I move the fabric at all, I'm going to lay my ruler on. And you should find that that edge that you've cut there is approximately two inches in from the outside edge of your fabric. And so we want to continue that cut now with the ruler all the way along two inches in from the edge. And I'll need to bring that in a bit further now to continue the cut for the rest of the distance. Just make sure things are still sitting together nicely. And continue cutting all the way along. Now you'll find that I've actually cut my batting to be 42 inches long and my fabric is obviously slightly wider so it doesn't it doesn't matter it's just that the fabric's a little bit longer we'll be worrying about that little bit in a minute and so now I need to do the same on this other side so I'm actually going to turn that around so that I'm cutting this way and same thing two inches in from the outside edge of your fabric so what you should have left in the middle is two and a half inches because we started with six and a half inches. We've taken off two inches, taking another two, which will leave two and a half in the middle, which is what we're looking for. Now just pull that along. And you should line up pretty well with your first cut that's there from when we cut the shape of the bag. Um, if it doesn't line exactly, make sure that you cut it so that you've got a nice even edge there. But that's looking pretty good to me. So these bits that we've cut away we don't need. You might find some other use for those. So now we've got this shape that's looking rather beautiful um, and, and it's a little bit long here. So we can just trim that little black, bit of black off to match the batting. We do want to keep the 42 inch length near enough. And now I just want to round those corners. Um, and you can do this. There isn't actually a shape in the pattern for that because I figured that you could probably do that little bit. You just want to cut off a nicely rounded corner there. Um, that looks pretty good to me. 
Um, you could make it slightly longer and more pointy if you wanted to, but mostly it's just so that on the end of your strap, this one I have made a little bit more pointy, it's just so that it, it doesn't sit in too wide at the end is your main criteria there. So then we're going to sew that. So we've got it all layered just the way we want it at the moment. Um, and I'm probably going to sew with the batting on top. And so this end bit here, we're going to, what we're going to do is sew all the way around the whole long length, including the curved end and everything. But we're going to leave this short end open because we need to be able to turn it out the right way. And so even though the pattern has this little sort of point and straight bit here, in actual fact, that's really just a guide because there's a little bit extra length in there to give us a little bit of room to move because with the quilting and the turning and all those sorts of things, so we're not trying to sew up here and then pivot and then turn. We're actually just coming from that from that end there or straight down actually here. Just ignore that straight edge. But you're, we're going to start sewing here, go all the way around and finish up back over here again. And don't worry about those because that will get um, absorbed later when we set it into the top of the bag. So I'll take it to the machine now. And again, with your quarter inch seam, just pop that in and start sewing. So a quarter of an inch all the way around the strap now. So when we finish this strap, we're going to turn it and, and then we're going to quilt it and everything. But it'll end up being this nice long strap that we've got on our bag here with that wider end that gets set into the top of the bag. So don't forget, leave that short edge have your strap open um, and then you'll be fine. So just continue sewing all the way around now. So I'm nearly all the way around my long handle here. turn that inside out which is a little another little challenge in life but first of all because we're going to be turning it the other way where we've got a curve it's helpful to do some little clips in so some little snippings just in not obviously cutting your, your sewing but up to the sewing or nearly up to the sewing just some little snips so that when it's turned out the other way there's a little bit of room for that uh, fabric to move because otherwise it's going to sort of get little gathers in it which are not attractive at all. So just anywhere there's a, a curve you should just clip those little seams. You can cut a little V out if you want to but I find it's only a fairly gentle curve that's probably sufficient and the same thing around this top curve as well and these ones you'll probably need to clip a little bit closer together because it's a tighter curve. So again, being careful not to get into your sewing. You don't want to snip your stitching. But just clip those curves so that they'll sit a little bit better when we turn it out the right way. Now, turning it out the right way, it's quite helpful to have something like some chopsticks. Um, something with a, a fairly blunt end. You don't want to point at the end because it'll put a hole through your fabric. Um, or you might have a, a turning tool, but I don't happen to have a turning tool with me. So I'm going to separate the two pieces of fabric. So one piece of fabric, you can usually do it by feel, will stay with the batting and this is the other piece. And we're just going to pop that in and then pop the chopstick end in and I just find if I lean it against me, I can just pull that over. So you can see that that's just sliding over there because we're trying to push that end right the way through. And there it is coming out the other end. Now I'm going to pull that off and that should all slide through but I'm going to leave the sticks in there just for the moment and just manipulate them a little bit before I pull them out because I want them to so I'm kind of manipulating them while they're inside because I want to be able to push that curve seam out as nicely as I can so that when I press that 
I can get a nice curve because it's a bit harder to pull it out it's easier to push it out and then those sticks you can just feed them back down through and this will pull all the way over so now we just need to go and and press all that so that it's all sitting nice and flat so I'll just get started on that because then we're going to do some stitching on it which amounts to quilting because we're going through the batting and things as well and so you can see I've left my walking foot on most of the time with this because we're working with a lot of pieces with batting and things it just seemed to make sense to use the walking foot and work out the best way I can with my quarter inches so I'm I'm reasonably happy with my curve there so I'm going to iron that so so as you're coming along the length just keep an eye on those side seams that they're coming out nice on the edge there maybe just do one side at a time and come back and fiddle with your other side Quite hard to do it all in one go. Um, and just continue on doing that so that your curve and everything comes out nice. So I've managed to get that pressed quite nicely because we clipped our curves. It's all sitting nicely. My curve at this end isn't doing too badly. And um, now I'm going to go back to the machine and we're going to be doing several rows of stitching. Again, this is our raw edge, that longer edge there. So we're just going to follow in quarter of an inch in from the edge all the way around the edge and then we're going to do another row quarter of an inch all the way around and then we're going to fill in the gaps and things as we get there so roughly quarter of an inch apart several rows of sewing to make the handle strong it feels nice it looks nice all those things so i'm just following quarter of an inch around from the edge in there and i'll go all the way around and then all the way around again So I've done all my stitching lines on the handle. If you can see these, I've got the quarter of an inch roughly in between them, all the way around, right around the end of the handle. And then just to fill in, we've just done these little V lines just in there. So this edge here is fine. That's just going to be tucked away in a seam shortly. Um, but now that we've done all that, it feels nice. It's nice and sturdy. We're going to pop some buttonholes. Now, if you didn't want to do buttons and buttonholes for this part of the strap, you could do Velcro or some something else. But I've chosen to do buttons um, on this bag here. You can see I've got a couple of buttons. I've got a couple of buttonholes so that when it's gone through the loop, you can button it up to the two. You could put an extra button so that you could button those two. So that there's a little bit more adjustment in the strap if you wanted to. So I'm just going to do two buttonholes because I feel that two is quite a good number for strength purposes <clears throat> and it looks nice too. So I've actually already done one buttonhole. Um, on this machine here, which is a very delicious machine, I can do automatic sizing of, to repeat buttonholes um, by setting it. So I've done my practice one to set it on just a practice piece and I just used some of the leftovers when we cut the strap out to do a practice buttonhole to make sure that my button hole is going to work for the size button I'm using. So whatever your machine is, um, that will work for you. But I have done a tutorial on how to do this particular button hole on this machine um, on uh, Tips and Techniques video 149 in case that's of any help to you. But other machines may do things slightly differently. Um, but for the moment, I've done my practice. Have a look at video 149 if you need to. Um, and now I'm going to do my second buttonhole here. So I've done the first one here, which started approximately an inch in from the end. The pattern tells you this. And then I'm leaving a three and a half inch gap in between. And I'm going to do my second buttonhole here. So I'll just quickly run that through um, here. So I'm, I've popped a pin in where I want to start it. I'm going to line that up with where my needle's going to go down. Take the pin out before I do that. Make sure it's got one of these slidey buttonhole feet make sure it's sitting right forward so that everything's in the right place and all I have to do is put my foot down and it does the rest for me And 
there we've got, see, it's taken all the stress out of buttonholing. I can clip the threads because it locks off as it goes. Very hard to see on this black. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have used black. And then to cut your buttonholes, I've got my little, a lot of us use these for un, undoing sewing, frog stitching, ripping it out, whatever it is. But actually it's a buttonhole cutter. And so I'm going to, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's two fine lines of zigzag stitching either side of a little tiny gap in between. So I'm going to pop the point of my tool right up close, not, there's some stitches that go right across the end of the buttonhole, but right next to those in between the other two lines of stitching. And there's a little blade that does the cutting of the fabric or the threads, whatever we're using it for. And that little red marker points along. So I can see the length of my buttonhole here. And I'm just going to slide that along. Now, not all the way, because I don't want to risk cutting into that stitching at the other end. So now I'm going to turn it round. Again, just avoiding the stitches that go right the way across. Pop the point in and run the blade along until it meets the area that I've just cut. And there's your lovely buttonhole, all ready for you to pop your button through. It's the right size because the machine was set to that size. So that was to try and show you that buttonholes need not be scary. You may need to just refer to the instruction manual on your sewing machine if you're not too sure about how to use the buttonholes. Um, so that's the buttonholes done ready and we can worry about that later. Now we're going to move on to the next step. So I'm actually just going to trim off on this handle piece that we've done where it comes down to this point here, it's going to be in the seam allowance and it'll be just a bit easier to line it up if we trim off at about that point so that, that we don't really need that little bit there. And now we've got that nice long edge and now we want to find the centre of that so we can mark that with a pin by just folding that so that we now know that that's more or less the middle of our handle. And then so we're actually working on the top band of the bag now. This band here, where all the, the casings and things are, and where the handle comes out of. So we're just trying to get it sorted so that we can pop the handle in this top band there. So your pattern will tell you that you needed to have cut a couple of strips that were 27 and a half inches long by two and a half inches wide from your fabric, and also one of the batting. And then you're meant to join them around into a circle. One that's just the fabric, just with your short seam here, the quarter of an inch seam, and then I press that seam open. So I've done a little bit of this ahead of time, and I've done the same, the other piece of fabric, the strip, the 27 and a half inch by two and a half, with the batting piece. And again, I've joined that into a circle with my quarter inch seam, and I've pressed that seam open. And then, do you remember we had these little tabs that we cut when we made the loop for the strap for the bottom of the bag? Then we had these uh, six three inch lengths from that tab that we made. This is to help make the casings for our cord to go through. So we've got our circle joined up with our seam pressed open. And we're going to position the, the bag handle. So we've got the handle, we've got that center point marked and that center point is going to sit right over that pressed open seam. So you can pin that in place and then we're going to just do pop the, the little tabs. Now I've actually gone ahead and done that but if, if you mark, do you remember how we marked quarter points when we were doing the bottom of the bag. So I can show you that on this piece here. So if your seam is one point, you mark the opposite point and then you open that out and you find the other two points so that you've got markers. If I pop a pin in there, you'll see that more clearly at quarter points around that loop. So do the same with this piece. So I've got my center back, I've got a few other pins in here which is confusing things, but I've got my center point marked here and I've got my other two centers, my quarters, marked here and here. So when you've got your center point 
to get these tabs in the right place to make the little casings that if I'm just using my board to help me line this up so I've got my center point pin lined up on a line there and then I've positioned my tab so that it the edge lines up with the next one and I popped a pin in and then again one inch the other side so there should actually be two inch gap between your two tab pieces and then I've come along the pattern tells you all this three and a half inches before I put my next tab in so there's a gap of three and a half inches between those two tabs and then again another three and a half inch there and then you'll find that you're coming up fairly close to your big strap on the back there and the same thing going around this way three and a half inch there three and a half inch there so you've got all these little pins with things hanging off them at the moment and so now I'm going to suggest that you take that to the machine and just do a row of holding uh, stitching so you don't necessarily need to go quite as far as your quarter of an inch you want it slightly less than quarter of an inch because this isn't a row of stitching that that you really want to see so I would if you can leave your quarter point pins in but you can take the other ones out with the tabs and the strap as you get to them we might start near the strap because it's a little bit bulky so in fact we'll start just before this back piece here this isn't as complicated as it possibly looks um, so I'm just going to do slightly less than quarter of an inch this time because it's the seam that's going to be kind of just hidden it's just holding these place, things in place so that you don't have to have all these pins for the next step So I take those pins out as I go, just catching these bits so that they're all just where you want them to be. And because there's so many bits you might as well go the whole way around doing this row as so. So I probably pulled out a couple of pins I didn't want to pull out. <laughs> They're easy enough to put that. Okay, I'm back to where I started. Which is great, not so far. Okay, so all these bits are now attached. And yes, I've pulled out one of my quarter marking pins. So I'll quickly pop that back because I've left one in. I can see that it just goes opposite there. So I've now got this funny looking loop with my strap on it and all these little bits flopping off just the way we want it. So now with this other piece that we've done and we've already quarter marked that, we're going to pop that around the outside of that loop and match those points. So match the where your seam is pressed open, match that to your centre back seam on here. and match up your other pins all the way around and then pop a couple of pins in between and then we're going to sew that seam so if you do your quarter points first and then pop a couple of others in between everything will sit quite nicely for you to do that because all those bits because we've done that row of holding sewing everything is going to sit where it should you're not trying to hold everything in place while you're sewing which is a really good thing and this bag is well on its way now and now I'm going to go back to the machine and do that quarter of an inch in line so it will be just inside if you can see your line of sewing like I can on my batting there this row will be just inside that because we're doing a full quarter of an inch seam allowance this time. Just start somewhere and work your way around.